assembly of the timer belt. I need to jack up the vehicle and remove the motor mount and so we can put the, the timer belt back on. Let's go ahead and do that. So put a piece of block of wood right there so you don't um, cause dents on your oil pan. So you just want a little bit of extra support. If that doesn't fall onto the ground. All right, let's go ahead and undo the bolts. All right, a couple of different extensions. So I didn't put these really tight at all because it was just kind of holding up our engine temporarily. Let's go underneath and get the motor mount off. So we have our new idler pulley right here. Go ahead and install this. So 33 foot pounds. I'm gonna do it backwards. I'll do that after, but let's do this one. Torque wrench. All right, thirty three. You hear that click, that means it hits the, the target torque range. Right, once we install that, then we'll go back to this page. So 19 foot pounds. Turn this down, it was at 33. So that's 20, that's 19 right there. All right, let's turn this in. Keep going. Around day, day three of this timing belt oil leak repair. This is a lot of work. All right, that's 
19 already. Not very tight. All right. So here's our tensioner. Leave the pin in, go ahead and install these. So I left the two screws in here, so I know exactly which screws they are. Right. Bottom. Might be easier to put the screws in after. Not much room down here. I can hold it from the back side. There we go. So taking everything off is much faster than um, putting everything back on. I don't want to use my impact or power tools um, to do the installation. And I want everything torqued to spec. We need this car to last us 300,000 miles. <laughs> so I'm going to feed this through. We want this bottom mark to line up with the crank. Right there. We need everything, to, all the marks to line up perfect. Okay, so. This goes around this side. So we're not gonna worry about that yet. We, we need to do that crank or that cam gear up here. That's the front. So let's go up. So that's where we needed that. We will have to rotate the front slightly. Drop our So I'm just rotating it very slightly just so we can get the groove in because the old belt was stretched slightly. There we go. So I'm lining up the top with that line right there. And we need to rotate this. Just a little bit, there we go. There. So if you look on our cam gear, I put marks on both. There, do you see right there? It has to line up to that gear perfect. And we'll make sure the back lines up as well. So let's go underneath. All right, so this needs to go under the water pump. Like that. It slid off a little bit. 
and this side needs to go on the other cam gear. Let me double check it. Sorry, I can't give you guys a better look because space is pretty limited. All right, so we have that mark on the bottom lined up. This mark up top is lined up. So we're looking at the gear and this mark back here. I know it looks a little off, but I, I double checked my previous video there and I accidentally tap touched that front portion. So the rear, the rear line behind the blue is the correct one. Okay, so it was pretty difficult installing the belt with the tensioner on with the water pump pulley right there. That was 19. Yeah, don't do 33 on that. So here's the bolt for the tensioner. And I'll show you in a bit when, before I release that pin, we need to make sure all the lines um, lined up correctly. So these are nine foot pins. Alright, about to put on. Alright, so bottom mark lined up. Top mark is lined up. Front, you see I put the F point of board. And then the back mark is kind of tricky to see. When I, I looked at my initial video when I made it. So it's the line in the back. I accidentally tapped the one in front of the blue with the marker, but it's definitely the one in the back right there. So we're good to go. Now we can release the pin. Let's go ahead and pull the pin. And then we'll, we'll check everything again. Pin is out.
right, so the torque wrench I have won't fit in there for the motor mounts, 30, 30 foot pounds. So I just kind of gassed on those. I know I don't do everything perfect, but I'm gonna try my best to keep follow the book as much as I can. This bolt should go under here. This um, is a little 10 millimeter that hooks onto the motor mount. It was the one that was giving us a hard time. It's right there. It's right under the power steering pump. this 10 millimeter definitely hard to reach knuckles come in handy. Let's torque it. This one, the book says 32 foot pounds. Right here, 32 foot pounds. So we're, we did that, but we need to, let's go put a piece on. All right, so that's on and make sure it's facing outwards. Look at this. To see how it's um, angled, you want it to channel the belt into that channel. Install lower cover. And these are nine foot pounds. So our torque wrench doesn't work very well when it's low, low torque like that. The click isn't very pronounced, so it's hard to tell. I think, yeah, I can kind of just do it by hand. Um, it's not like a really important, um, item spec wise All right. it's just tedious a lot of screws and then I don't want to use any power tools for this
I always use the small ratchet when I have to do like around 10 pounds, 9 to 10 pounds um, torque. Because if you're holding it like this, you won't put too much pressure on it. There's not much leverage on these shorter ratchets. hard getting used to having a camera in front of me I'm trying to reach in these tight spots so sometimes the camera isn't on the correct area <laughs> there we go but I try to document everything so if you're doing the job and you can look back on it and good thing I did because a couple but I don't remember how I do a couple things and I record everything so sometimes it helps me out too final stretch put the top covers on we don't have any fluids in here yet We'll have to do that too. And coolant and oil. And we have to bleed the coolant system. Yeah. But we're more than halfway. Final stretch. Three days going. <laughs> Shouldn't take this long. But when you're recording videos, it takes like twice even like three times longer when you're trying to record and do the job. Alright, let's make sure all these are relatively tight. Yep. All about nine pounds, hopefully. Bottom covers on. All right, we need to do top covers. The all nine foot pounds. All right, top covers. That's the front. This one's back. Let's go ahead and reach up there and see if we can screw them in. Five bolts each. The front should be easy. Let's do the back first. I like to work on the hardest thing first and then I do the easier one after. So you want it to, it goes in that slot, does like a little channel, and it has to slide in. I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these bolts in, keep it from shifting. It's easier from the bottom. I, I like to add it from the top and it's pretty difficult. So get it started from the bottom. You can reach most of the screws. Let's see. So this is our second one. Got 
third one all the way up here. Oh, my arm doesn't bend that way. Maybe my right arm can fit. There we go. Oh. I'm right-handed, so definitely much easier right-handed. Okay, one, two, three. All right, I think the other two we can do from up top. Let's see. getting all cut <laughs> I guess I should have wore a long sleeve working on this car all right we need one more You guys probably can't see this, but I need. Oh, that one's right above the the motor mount. Yeah, you can't see it from the bottom. You could probably see it from the top if you looked hard, under, right under the power steering pulley. Alright, let's go ahead and tighten these. When I was younger, I used to leave all these covers off. I thought that it looked cool to have a cam gear showing. <laughs> but you don't want stuff falling inside, or you don't want people touching it. But I guess it was easy to work on when you leave the covers off. But yeah, things can fall in. And
looks like it's in there pretty good. Can't reach that. Let's see if I can reach this one. lined up very well. There we go. You want the channel to go in? Front. These are pretty difficult to reach. That's two down. Use a little socket to hand tighten first. I don't want to just crank on it. Make sure all the threads go in correctly. I don't want to cross thread or anything. So I was make sure I start a couple turns with my hand. Because if it's, it'll bind if by your hand if you don't go in straight, and then you can kind of feel and you know when it's cross threading. Don't force it. If you do have issues, just um, use a different bolt and see if that fixes it. Some bolts are better conditioned threads than others. But this is not an easy job. So if you're not comfortable around cars, you should probably just pay somebody to do it. Uh, I don't know. I used probably around $500 to $600 in parts alone. So if you can get a good deal on like a timing belt change with everything, you should probably have somebody else do it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's up to you. I don't know what your finances are like. But I enjoy fixing cars, so I do this. But this is pretty miserable after three days. <laughs> three days of hot, like 100 degree heat in Florida. So it's really humid too. Four, one more. Okay, 
One, two, three, four, and five up front. Just making sure I secure all the bolts. Glad I double checked. Alright. Alright, covers are back on. Let's see what's next. Covers, covers, install crankshaft pulley. Alright, time to install a crankshaft pulley. 613. Let's see what the torque's back. I know it's crazy. So this is when we have to use our holder. Torque the bolt, bolt to 48 foot-pounds. All right. So basically the way it rotates, I believe it tightens up on its own as it rotates but you still have to torque it to 48 foot pounds. But when you're removing it, it's much heavier than that. All right, we can do that. Let's grab our crank pulley. And then we already have our pin. So I drove all over town trying to look for another bolt and I couldn't find one. Um, the dealership didn't carry it in stock. So I'm just gonna reuse this one. It's still okay. I just hope next time when I remove it, it doesn't strip, but assembly should be okay. I guess worst case scenario, we can weld a socket to it and then undo it that way. Make sure our mark is on there correctly. Yeah, so do you see the arrow with our mark? Forty-eight foot pounds. All right, so you're gonna need one of these holders that holds the crank pulley from rotating. And I'm gonna rest it. Oh, you don't want that to rotate. All right, 45 foot pounds, not much. All right, let's see where we're at in this service manual. But it's, it's nice to go uh, follow our service manual so then you know you're not forgetting anything. And you can follow this video too, so hopefully everything is in sequence and you have all the information you need to do this job. But I take it slow, so my videos are pretty long, but at least it covers pretty much everything. All right, well, we checked the timing marks like four or five times already earlier with the timing belt, so I'm pretty sure we're good. It's so hard to reach my camera in there to look. All right, remove, remove the jack and the wood block. I need to put the, the little ground cable back on. 
nine foot pounds. And I didn't touch this bolt at all. So that one's fine. But let's put this bracket back on. So we have a little ground bracket right here. And it's a 10 millimeter bolt that connects to the, the top engine mount. It's just this screw right here. And it says nine foot pounds. So we put that bracket back on there. Let's see if I can do it one, one handed. Nine foot pounds, 10 millimeter. ground is back on let's put this reservoir or this power steering reservoir back on too while we're here with the 10 millimeter I don't think I need it out of the way for anything foot pounds as well okay what else do we have it wants us to rotate our motor but I don't want to rotate it without engine oil in there so let me see what's going on I think because um this installation is just for timing belt it doesn't require um, resealing the oil pump and dropping the oil pan so they think you have oil in your engine and we don't have it because we're, we're doing um we resealed the oil pan and the oil pump o-ring was replaced so i'll make sure i add oil in before we rotate anything inspect timing belt let's see where we're at install a crankshaft pulley Rotate crankshaft pulley about six turns clockwise. So the timing belt positions itself on the pulley. Turn the crankshaft pulley. So it's white mark A lines up with pointer B. All right. Okay, let's add oil to our car and then we'll rotate. Alright, 
Grab your funnel. I like to put in four, about four and a half quarts because um, these engines are known to burn a little bit of oil. So this is how I like to punch the hole in there. So it gives like an easy stream. It should be fine, right? Because the engine's not on. But when I rotate it, I don't know if it's gonna cause um, the fuel pump or the oil pump to bring up some some oil into this filter. But let's go ahead and I like to kind of add oil to this. Let it soak in. Take the, your finger, get oil onto that O-ring right here. Alright, let's finish topping it off. Alright, let's install it. Once it bottoms out, one full turn. So it bottoms out. I want the fram to be pointing towards us again. The other fram. There we go. Well, another half quarter. See if we're getting any reading. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's almost to the top. You see? It is right there. You can see where it's shiny and then where it stops. So I'm gonna just top it off a little bit more because we started with a completely empty oil pan. So I use a five, five quart. Yeah, five US quarts. And that's how much I have left. So a little under half. All right, we'll save this. Get the top off. Yeah, take your funnel out. Catch whatever oil. All right, put an oil cap back on. All right, so we have oil in there. We don't have coolant in there yet. Let's look at a cooling system. So that's pretty much it right there. We'll rotate our... Here. So we're gonna rotate the crankshaft pulley about six times in a bit. It gets the timing belt to even out. Um, to position itself basically and then we'll check the timing marks and then make sure everything is timed move jack tighten the mounting bolts these mounting bolts so we already tightened those install the auto tensioner splash shield right front wheel one point seven US gallons that coolant change. I'm gonna have to pick up another. Well, I have one and a half gallons. So here, here's the coolant I'm using. So I asked the Acura service uh, parts guy, parts counter, and he said I only need one gallon. I should have looked at this, but all right. Well, we'll go ahead and add this. 
and then we'll top it off with that and we'll see how we are. we go with that let's go ahead and add it right now we we need to start the engine in order to bleed start the engine let it run until it warms up until the radio fan comes on at least twice turn off the engine check the level the radiator so I'm gonna go ahead and empty this old coolant out we have a coolant container over here coolant up on here Cracked. I'm gonna have to order another um, coolant cap. Maybe the whole coolant re reservoir. I didn't realize it was cracked. You can see. So I'm gonna reinstall this. panels. Let's remove this and fill it up to the max mark. I already cleaned this funnel. We're at the minimum mark. Max. Cap back on. Okay. Fill the radiator. Oh, our radiator cap is broken, too. Well, I hope that doesn't fall out. Let's see. Well, I guess I'll have to order another coolant cap. I keep finding things wrong with it. It's at, what, 214,000 miles? And little things are starting to break. We just keep replacing things as we go. All right, let's top off the radiator. I'm gonna squeeze the radiator hose a couple times. Alright, 
so it's pretty full right now. We're not gonna know until we start the engine. I'm not gonna put this little ring back on. It's like a little, it holds a swasher. Radiator cap. Don't don't let me forget. All right. Our reservoir max mark. We filled up our radiator as much as we can right now. I know there's the pump hasn't been turned on, so there's not much coolant. I'm going through the motor. So we have engine oil in there. Let's go ahead and rotate this six times. You wanted us to rotate it clockwise. We almost have one. <laughs> one. All right, five more to go. I'll probably fast forward this. This is boring. This should be number one. Right. One, the back cover. I'm gonna go ahead and check this. Six turns is back at TGC, top dead center. We checked this to make sure the timing works are good. Remove the jack. Tighten mounting bolts, all right. Install the drive belt auto tensioner. So 438. So that's already installed for us. Three foot pounds. Right. That's tightened by hand, so I'm going to get kind of closer. Millimeter. Yeah, 
12 millimeter. Thirty-three and sixteen. All right, that's thirty-three. go on top first around the power steering pulley. Tangle, it's a mess. All right, we got a on top power soon. So that's how it's supposed to loop. Let me show you guys a closer look. All right, so I haven't um, tightened it yet because I need to pull that this one, that bolt, the top bolt. So relieve some tension and then I can wrap it around the alternator or the crank pulley. I normally, I believe I do it with the crank pulley. So when I pull this down, I should be out of the way so you can have access to this, this whole belt. So it just goes on a circle, right? Yeah, move. Okay. I have to pull this. Good? Yep. Ugh. 
All right. Thank you. I'm trying to do that. Right? Is it on right? Yeah, I tried to do it one person, one handed, and I couldn't do it. I wasn't mm -hmm. strong enough. <laughs> I had to get help from my wife to put it put it on. I hear a storm brewing. I hope it doesn't rain on us, so I should work quick. I hear thunderstorms throwing in. So, header pipe. I didn't like how rusted the stuff OEM bolts were. So I went up to the dealership and I was able to get um, replacement bolts. So I think I got there, nine of them. I have 10 of them, one, I guess they threw in one extra, but nine bolts and we're gonna replace it with new bolts. So I remember what I did was I put the last, the end on first that goes to the cat. Let's move you guys over here. A little further so I have room so I can see. storm doesn't come in for real. I was kidding earlier when I was like, oh, thunderstorms are coming. I really think they are coming now. And then a hanger. I'll worry about the hanger after. I'm kind of balancing the. So. So it lined up pretty easy. The new bolts are working out well. There's one that's a little sketchy, so I'm gonna have to really be careful when I tighten it. Make sure I don't cross that it. All right, I wanna get this rubber hanger back on. Right here. I need a flathead screwdriver to kind of wedge it in. At least get it started. Okay. So I'm gonna wedge it in like that.
stomp it on and then pull the flat head out. Don't bust your knuckles. Flat heads out. The hanger is almost in. Where? Can't see. Okay. Oh, push. All right. All right, we got the hanger on. Let's get the rest of the 10 or the 14 millimeter bolts in. Oh, my extension. Where is the extension? Got it. So I'm putting everything on kind of light right now. Um, you want a lot of flexibility before torquing all of these. So here's the bottom one I was worried about. Let's see if I can ease it in. Make sure it doesn't strip. This one. It's so corroded that it's not going in very smoothly. Cross threading. All right.
All right, so I had to get my tap and die set out. Um, the threads were pretty beat up on the exhaust system. Um, it's just a lot of corrosion and everything, so I didn't want to cross thread anything. So what I did was I used this. This is M10 1.25, and I chased the threads. And I also used it on this tap to chase the threads to just double check to make sure it's the correct size. And we just want to make sure nothing gets cross-threaded. The ones that I can't turn on by hand, I make sure I chase the threads just to make sure there we go. Do you see how I was able to easily put it by hand? And Page 9, 12. There we go, found J pipe. 40 foot pounds. So 40, 40, and 24. Interesting. So this one going into the catalytic converter is 24 foot pounds, but then the other ones that go into the engine header pipes are 40 foot pounds. All right. Found the information we needed. Oh. That's one, two, three. Front is tight. Let's go ahead and do this one. One. Two. Three. And now we got to lower it to 24. All right. So these ones are 24 foot pounds. Weird angle. That's twenty four. Twenty four. Oh, last one.
all our header bolts. Forty-four foot pounds. That's what we we're looking for right here. It looks like oil or basically everything. Road debris, oil, transmission fluid, whatever is leaking from this car. All <laughs> is all stuck on this um, support. How's that like? Looks almost new. Not really, but good enough. Let's go ahead and throw this back on. This is pretty much trash. We have four bolts. And we set our, our torque wrench to 44 foot pounds already if I remember correctly it goes this way like this oh sorry not sure if you guys can see me Torque wrench is not the, the best thing to use as a ratcheting <laughs> tool. Forty-four. Forty-four. Last one. start this car I'm gonna add the covers on after I know it runs I don't want to put anything unnecessary if I have to pull it apart all right we 
have oil. It's on the full mark. We have coolant. All right, we're doing our final check. This has loosely installed a radiator cap. So I put it on halfway like that. Or let's just set it on there like that. We checked the oil. We have coolant in the reservoir right here. All our belts are on. We have oil. Let's connect our battery, 10 millimeter. Negative power is on. Let's start it and we'll top off fluid because it's going to suck some fluid in. Okay, so I want the fluid all the way to the top. Hey Wayne, it's going. What are you having to do? <laughs> Everything, like a, a timing belt, water pump, oh my oil pump. Yeah, so it's a full um, full maintenance. I'm replacing a whole bunch of little parts and I keep finding more things wrong as I go. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I hate work, working on cars. <laughs> you too. Let's start up the car. We'll start it up and warm it. I'm not gonna put all the covers on yet. Cross your fingers. <laughs> it sounds better than it did before. Dude, that's the goal, isn't it? <laughs> All right, engine sounds good. All right, our car started. We're good to go. I'm gonna finish installing everything on the car. Alright, so I have a whole bag of new clips. I'm just gonna use all the new ones. Make it pretty up here. We'll face all these clips the same way. All in the, the details. Engine cover on. Alright, 
and the cover is back on. We're gonna go put the under tray back on. We just took this car on a really long drive. We drove from Florida to Atlanta, Georgia, and we just got back. Here's what the bottom looks like. It's dry, yep. So no more oil leak. Um, the car ran perfect. The car feels like a, a brand new car again with the new timing belt. I'm thinking the old timing belt was a little stretch, so the timing wasn't perfect anymore. This brought it back into spec and it's driving much better.